Hey guys, what's up? Eddie Alho here with KissAnalog.com. Well, we're going to look at this power supply I have on the bench, okay? Sorry about the clutter and the mess. I'm going to clean up this bench soon, <laughs> honestly. Anyway, right now I'm just busy looking at this power supply. We looked at a comparison of the current probes with the same setup. Now what I want to show you is what the voltage and current look like as it goes through this, okay? And this is what I call low frequency switching power supply. It's funny because when switchers came out, everybody said, oh, you got a linear power supply or a switching power supply. When many audio amplifiers, for instance, do not have linear power supplies. They have low frequency switchers like this. They're not regulated. If they're regulated, they keep, it's a linear regulation versus a switching power supply regulation. But, these things are just low frequency switchers. Big old toroid or, and this isn't that big. I've got some really big ones, but this is good for, you know, this video to kind of show what happens. But we have a toroid transformer, 160 VA, going into 80 millifarads of capacitance, 40 millifarads per side, 40,000 microfarads per side, plus or minus voltage outputs. And we're gonna have 12 ohms load on each one. They're kind of warm right now. Been doing a little testing. Uh, anyway, I'm going to show you some mixig differential probes and the mixig differential current probe uh, with this new mixig scope. So it's a mixig day again. But really, I just want to show you uh, how all this stuff works. And when you see the waveforms and that, and if you've ever, ever wondered, you know, I did a rant video on power cords for audio amplifiers, for audio systems, and how some people sell them for thousands of dollars or even hundreds of dollars, which is ridiculous. I showed in that video a $50 power cord that checks all the boxes for all those expensive cords, but you don't even need that. And when you look at this video and you see the waveforms, you might see how changing this slightly or changing these have a large effect, where the power cord uh, how can, you know, it just can't have that big of an effect or even, it, I, I don't even want to say a marginal effect. It's like almost a zero effect. Okay, and I'm going to show you that in another video, but we're kind of building up to that because I'm showing you waveforms and we're kind of building up to more. So you're going to have a really good understanding of these low frequency switching power supplies as we go on. And uh, yeah, so there you go. And you know, we'll talk about how to select parts and how to design them as well. I've shown this stuff in other videos, but hopefully in this series of videos, they're going to be shorter, more to the point, and hopefully more helpful. So um, let's jump into this. Let's take a look. All right, guys, this is a setup. I've got the Voltcraft VC870, and it's set at watts. So it's going to give us the VA up here and the watts down here. And I could, you know, you can switch between, it'll tell you the cosine, it'll tell you other stuff too. But we're going to just use the VA and the watts, and we'll be able to figure out power factor from that, okay? Now, this is your typical power supply input to uh, mini audio amplifiers. You got your toroidal transformer, taking the AC voltage, it's coming right in here from the power cord, and this is power cord of right here is coming from the variac, okay? Comes in here, soldered into these wires here. They're in parallel, there's two windings, and they're in parallel for this application because we're 120 volts. We'd put them in series if we had 240, 220, whatever, okay? But right here is the differential probes looking at the voltage right there at the input. We're looking at the current right here at the input with this nice mixed sig uh, current probe, okay? The differential probe right here is the DP750-100, all right? It's times 50 times 500. We got times 500 right now, all right? So the mixig current probe that we have right here is a CP503. It's a new one. It works with the new scope. Both these uh, differential probe and the current probe are set for the new mixig oscilloscope, okay? I'm going to show you those connections in just a moment. 
Now, so it comes in here, the AC, goes through two bread direct fires, one for the negative, one for the positive voltage, okay? Because this is for an audio amplifier. So we have a plus and minus voltage, okay? Or, well, minus and plus voltage in this case. And then I've got resistors. I've got basically 12 ohms, eight plus four ohms, 12 ohms for this. And over here, another 12 ohms for this side, all right? And so that's, we're gonna look at the power, but it's roughly say 100 watts per side, okay? This is a 160 VA transformer. It's really closer to 80 watts per side, 160 watts on the output, but the input, 160 VA. So we're gonna go a little bit above the VA rating of this, which is fine. It just means that we're, we're just pushing it a little bit, but it's fine, it'll be okay. And um, all right, so, over on the output, we have a voltage. I've got the Testo 760-2 multimeter. I'll show you that in a moment. I'm just looking at the voltage from plus to minus. Well, it's actually plus. I got the plus to minus mixed up. But anyway, I'm looking at the voltage across the full output, across both outputs, the grounds in the middle. So really, we have a plus here and a minus here, okay? But I have a differential probe here of mix sigs set up it is a dp 1000 10007 and we got that times 10 i'll show you that in a moment well here i'll show you right now okay so here's the differential probe right here okay that's for that voltage so we're looking at the output and then i also want to uh, talk about this one the dp 10013 times 50 right now and that is looking at the voltage right here. So we're looking at the voltage at the input coming into the transformer. We're looking at the voltage coming out of the transformer into the power supply, into the rectifiers and all this. And then we're looking at the voltage on the output. And what I want to show you is what all those voltages look like, waveform wise. I mean, as far as the voltage itself, the actual RMS voltage, nah, that, that's, that's here and there. there for this exercise. Really what I'm trying to show you is that when you're using a transformer, you're running power through it, what the waveforms look like as they go through the power system, okay? You're gonna see waveforms and, and see the shapes. The actual voltages and currents, uh, they can be you know, modified for whatever voltage or current systems you're looking at, but they're, they're gonna look similar to this if you're going up towards the maximum rated power, okay? So these are 10 millifarad capacitors, 10,000 microfarads. So we got 40,000 microfarads here, 40,000 microfarads here, or 40 millifarads, if you wanna call it millifarads. What I did is with the eight and four ohm resistors, so I use these really cool uh, connectors that when you spring up these, here I'll open up the middle one because it's not really holding anything down. But when you put a wire in and you push it down, it locks it in. I mean, these things are locked in. So very great connectors. Um, they can handle a lot of current. I think it's 30 something amps on each one, 250 volts. So um, the separation between them is the voltage rating, the amount of copper or whatever is a current rating and they hold on super tight. So. I think electricians, I want to believe, love these things, but I'll put the links below if you want to buy some of these things. Um, they're inexpensive, you can reuse them, reuse them, so they're awesome for the setups like this when I'm doing a video and I just want to make a quick connection that's very safe. So the idea is that we're going to have AC voltage coming in, 120 volts, 60 hertz here in the USA, okay? So it's going to come in. It's going to go through this transformer and it's going to sit here at some voltage ratio. This is going to step it down to roughly, say, let's say 25 volts, just, you know, say, okay? So 25 volts per side. It's going to go through these bridge rectifiers through each capacitor bank, okay? There's a separate set. There's actually two devices, one on each side of the heat sink, okay? To give you four diodes for each one. So a, a four diode rectifier for each side there's LEDs that turn on and there's resistors and the discharge the current stuff like that but anyway 
this is going to give a nice voltage output to your audio amplifier. So we're going to see what that looks like, all right? All right, guys. So one of the things I want to kind of explain is we're going to look at the voltage. We're going to look at the wattage and the VA, the volt amps. So the volt amps is what's coming in here. It's how many volts and how many amps are coming in. Okay. The wattage is actually how much power is coming in. Well, volt times amps is power, right? Well, the reason they call it volt amps is because there's a power factor thing here. And what power factor is, what it means is that basically the voltage and current aren't happening exactly at the same time. And we're gonna, you're going to see that. And so when they don't happen at the same time, it's volt times amps. Power is when you multiply at every moment, at every moment you take the volts times the amps and you multiply it together and you come up with power and you're gonna it's gonna be obvious you'll see the difference between that okay because normally you got sine waves coming in problem is the voltage is a sine wave the current is not it's pulsed this is a low frequency switching power supply a lot of people think these are linear power supplies they're not when you see a transformer big old toroid and a bunch of bulk capacitors, that's not a linear power supply, okay? A lot of people just think that's linear. It's from the old days. They just say, oh, it's linear. You go from linear like this to a switching power supply. Well, a switching power supply is different um, in the sense that you're controlling transistors turning on and off. In this case, we have diodes turning on and off. They're commutating on and off. So they're switching on and off. So they're doing it at 60 hertz versus some controller telling a FET to turn on a, a 100 kilohertz or 200 kilohertz or some other frequency, okay? So this is a low frequency switching power supply. It's what we've been using for years and years before so-called switching power supplies came out. This is a low frequency switcher. So I just want to explain that. When it becomes a linear power supply is when you linearly regulate the output. And some people say that, well, yeah, but if the voltage changes from say 120 to 220 the output changes the same amount or 120 to say 110 or 125 the output voltage is going to change linearly with the input well that's not quite exactly true it kind of does but but it's not quite true that's not what makes a linear power supply an unregulated power supply is an unregulated power supply in a low frequency switch like this you have kind of a linear output but so do you in a switching power supply if it was not regulated the input and the output as it changes would if it was unregulated they would change together that doesn't mean they're changing linearly because there is a, a, a change and we'll talk about that in a minute here okay let's go ahead and go ahead and show you the rest of the setup and then we'll talk about that more and i'll show you and it'll become obvious Okay, there's the new MixSig uh, oscilloscope. These are awesome oscilloscopes, and they have these new probes that have electrical contacts that make connections. They make connections. See all these pins? God, they stick. It's just magnetic, but they stick really firmly in there. You see that? And then they automatically switch, and you can switch range here if you want to and yeah so really nice probes they they yeah just love them and um so anyway and yeah they look proprietary right just like tektronics and other companies that make these proprietary things and every time they come out with a new series they change the probes you have to change all your probes out with the new scope well these also have shoot i don't have it handy right now but they also have an adapter that goes from this to a bnc okay so you don't have to use a proprietary connector you can use the adapter to bnc so that's really amazing okay so what i want to explain here is we have the dp750-100 this is a differential probe this is looking at the voltage of the input then we have the cp503 this is a new current probe and this is looking at the current at the input. And then the next probe right here is one of the differentials. And that is the DP10013. And that's looking at the voltage 
the output of the transformer. And then over here, channel four, we have the DP1007, and that is looking at the voltage of the output, all right? So that's, the, that's what we're looking at. All right, and so then we're looking at 10 milliseconds. Now, at 60 hertz, it takes about 16, 17 milliseconds per cycle. So we're going to see, you know, lots of cycles, okay? But not too many because we want to get really good resolution, okay? Channel 1's input voltage, 50 volts per division. Channel 2 is input current, 1 amp per division. Channel 3 is 10 volts per division, and that's the voltage out of the transformer going into the capacitor rectifier bank, okay? Channel 4 is 10 volts per division, and that is the output of the capacitor bank. So it should be a DC voltage with some, you know, with some ripple. Alright guys, we're going to go ahead and power it up, and you'll see the LEDs turn on, and we're going to look at the VA and the watts here, okay? I just want to show you that before I show you the oscilloscope, okay? So let's go ahead and do that first. But you know what I do just to be safe, besides wearing safety glasses? I also use a little plastic box just to cover. All right, so now we got things covered up. I got my safety glasses on. Hold on a second. Okay, I got my safety glasses on. We got the things covered up. Let's go ahead and power it up. Okay, that was the power adapter you heard click on. And look at this, 165 watts at the output. 209 VA. I'm going to hit the hold so I can hold that. Now let's go look at the scope. All right, guys, I turned it off. I'm going to turn it back on so you can see it come on for yourself. And sorry about the reflections, pretty bright. Okay, I'm going to hit the run stop button, freeze it. Okay, I'm going to turn off power so I don't have to worry about touching or anything happening while I'm talking to you. But there you go. There's the waveforms, okay? Let's hit the zoom. We'll zoom in on, okay, there we go. There's, well, here, let's open it up just a bit more. Okay, so here's a cycle, okay? Uh, now remember, the yellow one is the voltage, okay? I can turn that, those off so you can see it more clearly. Okay, so the yellow one's the input voltage. Okay, that's what's going into the transformer. And you can see it's misshaped a little bit, and that's due to the impedance. I have a variac and so on, so there's a little bit of impedance at the input. And uh, and you notice there's a little notch here and a little notch here. Let's let's look at the other waveforms and we'll see what's going on. And also, you notice the DC voltage. Um, it is 29.33 volts RMS, and it's 29.8 volts high. So. There's a little bit of ripple going on. It's kind of hard to see. I'm going to show you that closer up in a minute. But right now, there's the input voltage, okay? And then there is the input current. So see, as the capacitors are charged up and it's just running continuously, supplying the power at the load, uh, it's flat, right? But then as soon as the voltage comes up high enough to overcome what the output voltage is, then the diodes turn on and we get a big pulse of current. Okay, so we got a big pulse of current, and it is 3.5 amps high and 1.6 amps RMS. So it's like double the height as it is RMS wise. So, yeah, that's not ideal, right? That's your pulsating input current. That's your switching power supply, your low frequency switchers. The diodes are switching on and off, low frequency switching. Okay, now I turn on, here I'm going to turn off the blue, yellow one. I turn on the purple one, but let's turn off the yellow one. The input and there is the power at the input of the bridge rectifiers what happened to our nice sine wave now it's flat here flat here what the heck well you know what that is if you look at the flat spot where it starts is where this current starts when the current goes up and then it stops then it continues to be in sine wave but where it's on, between these two points here, between those two points, it's flat because this pulse of current causes a IR drop in the transformer, current times resistance. So that's a voltage drop in the transformer winding, which flattens it off. That's not ideal, right? We don't get the voltage into the rectifiers that we want, but 
it's flat and so we get a wide pulse. Now if it stayed high, we'd probably get a narrower pulse and it'd be a higher current. So anyway, so if you get a transform that's lower DC resistance, it will get more sinusoidal. So you want to, now we are maxing out this transform. We're kind of actually going over the VA rating because we're at 209 volts uh, volt amps, right? And this is 160 volt amps. So we got 165 watts out. So we are kind of pushing it. But I wanted to amplify or, you know, kind of show you what's happening. So, and also, if you look real close, let me zoom in. Well, all right. So if you look real close, um, there's this corner here. Right where the diodes turn off, there's a corner there. I'll, I'm going to zoom in on that and show you a zoomed in version of this waveform. Okay, we're going to turn on power and we're going to look at just this top half. So we're going to have to go to like say two volts per division or something like that and just zoom in top the waveform so you can see what I'm talking about. So here we go. Okay, and I'm going to stop it. Well, actually, you know what? I'm going to go to even, I'm going to widen it out. So there we go. So let's zoom over here. Okay, and let's stop it. So you see that purple waveform? Uh, the green, the yellow waveform is the input voltage, the blue one's the current pulse. So I want to focus on that purple one, what's actually going into the uh, capacitor, the rectifier brink, okay? Okay, that's what I really want to focus on. Now, let's widen it out a little bit. You see what I'm talking about? It comes up, flattens off because of the uh, voltage drop across the windings. So that makes sense. Oh, there's a voltage drop. And it's kind of increasing, you know, so as it goes up. And then all of a sudden, the diode turns off. And see how there's a step? That's a sharp edge right there, guys. And right there, you see a little nook, a little glitch as it turns off. So that right there, that sharp edge is not good. But that's what happens with a uh, switching power supply. You have diodes switching on and off. All right, guys, now we're running live right here. So here, let's go to this guy and let's shrink this waveform down the current. And we'll push it in the middle. Okay, there's our current waveform. Let's get away a few more waveforms so we can see what's going on. Not that many, maybe that many. Okay, now let's bring up the... Uh, okay, so here, let's bring in the voltage, okay, the output voltage, and we're switching AC. We want to see the ripple on this thing. So we're going to go there, and actually I think we can go to 6 amps because we don't have that much current, and we're going to magnify it, okay? Okay, there's the uh, current. Now let's open up the voltage. We're going to go to AC. Okay, and we're going to, uh, whoops, wrong one. We're going to magnify this, okay, so we can see the ripple. And let's turn on that current again. There's the current. All right, so what do we see? Uh, what happens is we get a current pulse, okay? As the current pulse goes up, the voltage on the output the gets charged up. Then the current drops down and then it discharges. So we see it charge up, discharge, charge up, discharge. And that is 410 millivolts to the peak from the zero line. So it's about 820 millivolts peak to peak, okay? It's 200 something millivolts RMS. But we got a, almost a volt peak to peak of ripple. Yeah, it's hard to see that when we we're just looking at the whatever it was, 25 volts, something like that. But once you zoom in, you can see the ripple, and you can see how when the current charges, it charges up the ripple, and then it discharges in between cycles. And because there's this dead time between cycles, because the diodes are not turned on, because the voltage, because the voltage hasn't risen up high enough to turn the diode on, it's off, and then the diode conducts. Then the next diode conducts. So that's your switching power supply, diodes conducting on and off. All right, so now we're running again. The AC voltage, the yellow one. The purple voltage is the voltage going in. And the blue is the current. So the purple's being flat topped when it's on because the IR drops. 
and here's the output ripple, okay? All right, now let's look at the DC value of the output, just for fun. There's the DC output, it's like 30 volts max, 29.5 volts, so there we go. Okay. All right, guys, so the transformer and the load heating up, that's what it looks like right now. 211 V8 and 166.8 watts, okay? What power factor is that? Eh, roughly 70%, but here, let's do some math. All right, guys, so what do you think of those waveforms? Does it make sense to you? Let me know in the comments below if you like to see um, a little different view of the waveforms or something else. I'm going to have some... Oh, my glasses here. Oh, and by the way, my... My other safety device, the little plastic box I put over things, it's always a safe thing to, to do that, just to be careful. You never know. But, yeah, so what do you guys think? Um, interesting waveforms, right? So you can add more and more capacitance to take that ripple down. Another thing you can do is use C's for capacitors, C-R-C, -C, you know. Um, you can use CLC, so put an inductor or resistor in between your capacitors to help filter and smooth off those waveforms. You, just, you can also actually add an inductor of the input to smooth off those current pulses from that switching, that low frequency switching power supply. As these diodes commutate, they turn on and off. That's a switching power supply. You can see that from their current pulses. The uh, power factor power factor ideally would be one it'd be unity you know you'd have the current waveform sinusoidal just like the voltage waveform so current and voltage also in phase with each other so they're happening at the same time as they're going up and down right instead some people think oh well in school they they're taught that you have a sine wave current sine wave voltage and they're out of phase and that's power factor well that's true but most, you know, in practice, you go through bridge rectifiers, which causes a pulse. And that pulse, first of all, there is some phase shift, but there's also distortion. And distortion, anything that's unusable power for watts, that's why they call it VA. Anything that's unusable for watts is, it's either held in an inductor, so... Ideally, that would mean that it's not dissipated power. It's just the problem would be that you have to give, say, 200 something watts or VA to get 160 watts out. So, ideally, the storage, the phase shift caused by an inductor or capacitor would just be stored energy that's returned back. But it's also dissipated because there's IR drops, there's resistance in these things capacitors and inductors so even though a lot of it is just stored energy a lot of it and it's returned but a lot of it's dissipated too or some of it's dissipated depending on you know everything else right the other thing is the distortion when you have these pulses you get second order third order fifth usually you get a bunch of odd harmonics Third and fifth and seventh are the biggest ones, and they can they're, they're primarily the losses you get. You don't you know if it's 60 hertz, you know the third order is 180 hertz. You can't use that power. It's out. It's not in phase. It anyway. Yeah, it's just unusable power. So power factor is phase shift and distortion. So those two things take away your power, your usable power. So yeah first video hopefully that was usable uh thank you patreons i really appreciate you guys especially these days that you know uh i guess patreons understand but um yeah i'll i'll tell the story in weeks to come probably but yeah so things yeah I'm, i really appreciate the funds there's another way to uh, help out and that's to hit the super thank button down below you buy me a cup of coffee that's very helpful too <laughs> and also i'm turning on the membership so you'll see down below the memberships and what that does is it gives you a chance to have you know some kind of icon next to your name when you comment or whatever it kind of shows that you're a supporter of the channel so just want to point that out so let me know what you guys think of those things what you think of this I'm going to do another video where I go a little deeper into this to show that. And also, 
if you're interested, I think I'm going to do it because, um, you know, whenever I talk about audiophile stuff, it ruffles feathers, which I don't really like to do. But at the same time, I want to save people money who think they have to buy these expensive power cords. They don't have to. And maybe I'll learn something and realize, oh, well, you have to spend at least this much, you know, or something. I don't know. We'll see. But as we look at this, if you think about what the waveform looks like at the input and how it looks at the output, also, if you think about using an R in here to help use an RC filter or an L for LC filter, or lo and behold, you spend the money to do regulation. Yeah, it causes heat, but so does a Class A or a Class AB amplifier. So if you really want good audio, you could regulate the output. Now, some people say you don't have to regulate the output because you don't need to because the power amplifier does all that. It controls the sine wave. Well, that's true. But, um, especially for those who think power cords make a difference, there is a difference in the gain and stuff of your output transistors depending on how much voltage. If that voltage is fluctuating, how much does that gain, how much has changed in there? Well, that's got to be much different or have a lot more effect than changing the freaking power cord of the input. <laughs> so anyway, all right. So um, not saying all, hey, I'm not saying all cords, like, you know, if you have interconnects and speaker wires, I'm not talking about those. We're talking, I've been, so far I've been beating up the power cord people because the same people selling power cords, I just think it's ridiculous. So anyway, as we see these waveforms and stuff, I think, I'm going to get more believers, more people that see the science and how ridiculous it is to think the power cord has that much or any effect at all. So, and how these things have a much larger effect, okay? So the same people selling amplifiers that have control of this stuff that also want to sell some power conditioner box, yeah, you should not buy an amplifier from those people because they're trying to rip you off. That's my belief. That's my in my humble opinion, that's what I think. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Um, I kind of ranted a little bit in this video. Sorry. Hopefully, these shorter... Let me know what you think of these shorter videos. I'm, I'm trying to uh, cut it down just to hit topics instead of covering too many topics in one video. What do you guys think of that? Hey, thanks for watching. A free way to support the channel is to like the video, okay? That helps a lot. Uh, thanks for watching, and uh, we'll see you next time. Oh, and subscribe! I see a lot of people answer, are asking questions or commenting all the time, and I try to get to people. But I go through the uh, I go through with patrons first, and then the subscribers, and then I try to hit other people. And I I do answer quite a few videos. But let me know what you guys think and uh, subscribe. Okay, appreciate it, guys. Just hit twenty one thousand. That's pretty amazing. Catch you next time.